what kind of portfolio projects do you need if you're planning to apply for full-time roles, freelance projects, and internships? In this video, we're gonna be checking out two such projects that actually help these folks land roles. If you wanna check out more case studies like this, I'm gonna leave a link to our case studies repository, which has over 300 projects that you can browse. Besides that, if you wanna check out more reviews like this, check out the live stream tab to check out some of our past sessions. Let's jump into this. Okay, so Janil, this first one is by Akshay. This was also one of the case studies that helped him land a role as a product designer at Learn App. This is a mobile app, uh, Indie Gigs. It's for finding and applying to gigs made easier. This is our core of the problem statement. Indie artists, so now I know who it's for. It's for indie artists. A quick note to everyone, whenever you're doing apps, right? Whenever you're doing case studies as well, it's very important to know who it's for. Of course, while designing, it's important to know who you're making it for. But even here, when you're presenting, it should be very clear to the viewer as soon as possible who it's for and roughly what it does. Here, we've called out the problem, the problem that independent artists have, which is it's difficult to book these and you do have to do a lot of outreach. Project information. This is also useful context. Uh, and the main one of the reasons you might consider including something like this is uh, it helps the reviewer know the scope of the project, right? It's not immediately obvious, is this a personal project? Is this for a client? Is this for a company? A top level view of the design process followed. Now, I like seeing this, but at the same time, let me give my perspective as a reviewer. Now, let's say when I was at Unacademy and I'm, let's say I'm hiring for a role, I would probably go through a bunch of portfolios, right? Like I would have tabs open, like at least 10 plus tabs. So personally, this does get a little repetitive. In the end, there's no one right process, but roughly most processes look similar. So maybe consider how you can make this personal to you. Like it's not just that context gathering happened. Understanding pain points happened. You made it happen. Make it personal, but not a problem. This is my favorite part. When you really like when we go into the user research that Akshay has done, it just blew me away. Like he has actually read industry reports on this to understand the breakdown of like how many indie artists are there on the platform. And not only that, but he goes above and beyond, not just mentioning one or two lines, but he actually shares like the takeaways from that research. Like what did he take away? He links that research there, which shows me that, wow. And he's made my life easier by not having me click on that research link, but just having a pie chart like, hey, this was the main takeaway. Okay, a question people normally have is this kind of stuff, like this is market research, right? You're not exactly talking about, it's not exactly user research, but it's market research, which is just as important. My suggestion on when should you do this? That's a big question people have, which is at the start of the project, a lot of people think they have to do this at the start. And a lot of people get stuck in this stage in the start of their project, right? So a quick note for all of you here, when you're starting your project, do some research, but the bare minimum to move forward, right? You don't need to be an, become an overnight expert at, uh, let's say, music industry. Just know enough that, you know, you're like, oh yeah, okay, I, I kind of understand it now. However, at the end of the project, when you're actually presenting, that might be a good time to revisit this, right? So usually when you have case studies like this, they add this stuff later. Like they might have done this, a little bit of this research in the beginning, but most of this is done later as a way to present this market context, right? Like now Akshay can say, oh yeah, there are these four groups and I've done this and that's how I included this in the app. But you don't need to know this in the start. So don't delay getting started just because you're stuck in this phase. And this is where like he mentions, like I got on a one-on-one -on -one call with two of my musician friends. This is amazing because when I read this, it shows to me that I mean, he could have skipped it. But the fact that he actually went above and beyond, like these are small, small things in a case study where when you mention this, like, hey, to do this research, I reached out to some of my contacts and did this. It just shows that you're willing to go above and beyond. So I really like that note. I kind of wished Akshay had a screenshot of that call that he did with this manager friend or mm. artist. So you could have put that there because, you know, pictures speak louder than just words. Like having him on the call or a Zoom call or something like that or meeting in a coffee shop and then labeling that, hey, I'm doing user research interview, showing that you're doing something rather than just talking in one or two lines is way more powerful. Quick note on personas. I think this is something people, I have observed people have difficulties with. In general, folks, a persona is useful because it helps visualize who it's for, right? We are talking about this app in the market. So think about the levels of this, right? We're talking about zoomed out level, the music market. 
Then one zoomed in level, which is what are the participants in this market? There's the venues and then there's the uh, indie artists. Then we're talking about some of their insights, like some of their inputs, right? You got this stuff from it. Now you're going even specific and you're saying one person, right? This is a persona. This persona roughly represents a group of people. Okay. Let's get to the designs. I'm ready. Going a little meta here, you know, uh, in the beginning of this review, we said it's important to know who you're designing for and uh, like, who is it for? What problem it solves? Let's think about that for this case study, right? Who are you writing this for? You are writing this. Yes. The goal that you have in mind, the ideal outcome is you get inbound messages, which sets up a first call and then you get into an interview round and then you get a freelance project internship job at the end of it. The other outcome is a lot of the people who are reading this are going to be other designers, other product managers, other developers, other founders. So it's nice including this educational parts. It might seem like, you know, everybody knows this, but no, not everybody knows this. And if you thought about these questions, it's a good idea including it. So I like the flow. The flow is you're kind of doing tell and show. Uh, I think some people in their case study flow sometimes do the opposite as well, where they tell, 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 and they show a little bit too late. I would say show and tell together wherever possible. It just, it just makes it easier. Yeah. Most people know we should do onboarding. Onboarding is a very common thing most designers know. Okay, 10K folks, you know this, but a lot of designers don't know that onboarding is incomplete without activation. You can onboard someone, but the purpose of onboarding is to activate them. And activation looks different for different apps, right? So in this case, I like this here, which is you are trying to ensure that somebody doesn't come through onboarding without being activated. Because if they haven't been activated, very likely that that affects the experience and they don't end up using it. In this case, activation looks like this card on top, which says complete profile, right? Common pattern. I think you would have seen this on platforms like LinkedIn, where if you have an empty profile, less people visit your profile. And then so you visit the platform less. And one thing I'll give uh, Akshay an award for that he's done really well on this specific image that you see here. So take a very closer look at this. You probably have seen many case studies where people directly just show the design or a breakdown. But what Akshay has done is look at that breakdown page. He's actually added annotations. So if you, if you scroll up, you'll see that on the breakdown page, he's actually okay. added on the left side, like annotations, like, Hey, this is why I'm thinking about doing this. He's actually mentioned the design decisions, like cards with all the necessary details. He's mentioned, like I designed these filters, uh, keeping these things in mind. So if a hiring manager is already going through this, right, they've already gone so far and they're already viewing the image and the design of it. Now they also know why Akshay designed it this way. They're able to see the design decisions that Akshay is making rather than having to read paragraphs below it. So whenever, like as Abhinav was saying, you can combine the show and tell in some way, even in the images that you're putting in, it's a quick win. And right there, what I like is that he's actually shown the sticky states. Like it just shows to me that when I'm looking at this portfolio, like, wow, he's not just thought about the entire flow, but he's thought about the different states, right? Like what does a design look like when uh, there's only a one week left before the concert, two days remaining, like that small, subtle detail is a big thing. Yes. Yes. Great point. As part of your interview round, you pro you did a bunch of interviews, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right. What was your experience presenting this case study in a design interview? Uh, honestly, it was a breeze because uh, uh, I, for the first time, I wrote a case study for the first time. This was my, I did another one pre prior to this, which was the landing page, uh, uh, the assignment two of the cohort. Uh, but this was the actual uh, product uh, sort of case study. I even got a couple of messages on LinkedIn, uh, a, a PM from uh, Blinkit reached out to me yeah, that he's actually working on something like this. So yeah, we, we, we have to get in touch soon. Got it. Got it. Uh, and my suggestion to everybody would be one thing that I would do different here, just if I wanted to share that is I did not see too many GIFs and I did not see like prototypes or video walkthroughs, right? Like maybe the loom, maybe a prototype walkthrough, which is okay personally because you took the opposite approach. You took the approach of laying down everything and explaining. But for everybody here, I can just share if doing this is too challenging for you, right? You should do this. I think this is a nice way to present context. You could also do walkthroughs. You could do video walkthroughs, record a prototype, you know, use a loom to do it. But yeah, we're going to be checking out Ayushman's case study, also a landing page of, of a killer landing page for a virtual reality arcade gaming company. Okay. Standard stuff. Uh, you've got your context brief landing page. Let's watch the prototype. But there's a second video here. Uh, I think this is the one with music and stuff. Maybe made in After Effects. Let's check this out. Who 
spooky spooky mysterious nice bro really cool a quick note to everybody here okay when you're designing your case study typically you have to design assets like this but here's a quick note for you i think one mistake sometimes people make is when they are designing the product so in this case the website sometimes they are parallelly also designing their case study while designing the product which is a wrong approach right i want to just say this for people because the core thing that you're being hired for is not the video you should do the video later to help your presentation not as part of your core project the core project is the thing you're getting hired for which is to make apps to make websites to be a designer to solve problems so anyway the note i was trying to make is media like this that you do later designing it for your case study the double purpose that this has right out of all the case studies we've seen number one it's good to read it kind of mixes it up when there's visuals graphics gifs videos multimedia but outside of that these elements can help you drive traffic to the case study now this is something that's super important that you know you really have to think like a product designer to see the depth here which is it's not enough to make the medium case study how does the rest of the world know that you just made a medium case study right you have to announce it you have to create opportunities for people to click the link somewhere on the internet so they come here right so it's not enough just doing so you also have to drive some traffic and a very simple way to do that is these assets that you do as part of your case study design later tweet these post it on x x.com post it on linkedin quick note here okay folks you might be wondering how much of this should i show like this behind the scenes stuff now of course this is just one image like you could technically it's possible to show all of this but my suggestion to you would be this kind of behind the stuff scenes like this birds eye view the advantage is this is a conversation starter when you're in an interview right so somebody sees this you know even if they quickly skim this becomes a entry point a jumping point into your figma so they might be like hey super interesting can you walk me through this and so then you switch from case study to your figma walk them through have a conversation and most likely what's going to happen is when you have the case study someone is going to go through it in depth they like it which is why they're inviting you for an interview and during the interview like we saw from other folks who came on spotlight is you most likely will just have like either walk them through your figma or make a separate presentation it's very rare that in an interview you're going to actually pull up this medium article and then read it in front of them or walk them through it this is basically yeah. used to kind of get inbound to get uh, attention to it or if someone wants to review it before the interview and then during the interview it's going to be much more condensed what i also like about this section is or the way he's done it is he's gone it section by section and explained his design uh, thought process like the pricing section why he's going about it the reward section why is he designing it a specific way a couple of lines on um, price anchoring for example so instead of just like talking about design about the entire website in one go he's broken it down into different sections and explained his design decisions section by section which makes it very easy for me to digest all this information so really good job there i think a good point you made there janil which is yes in an interview you will not read out your case study right as a newbie i have seen this mistake done before when i've interviewed somebody who is too new which is when i say show me your best project they will open their case study and they'll start reading it features section position midway through the landing page this visually it doesn't happen that often but it does happen right so in general it's totally okay by the way to present your case study itself during the interview just go through sometimes some companies you know in later stages of the rounds they will ask you can you prepare a deck so in that case you would just take these visuals make a deck present it uh, or when it gets detail they will typically ask you to go into figma and then you can screen share and show them that what's up ayushman welcome to the stream hi vinav hi jaydeel uh, it's amazing to be here and uh, i was looking forward to it can you talk to me a little bit about what your interview rounds were like as part of that yeah so basically the first interview was with uh, jivanshu he works at cast 24 he reviewed my project asked me to uh, give him a walk through of the entire thing then i was called in office and it was a it was sort of a brainstorming session with the senior pm after which they liked my whatever they liked but they called me in asked some questions and i started actually my interview was on thursday and i joined on monday so that mm. was how quickly it went nice a related question did you uh, while designing this did any point did you feel like you had feedback overload which is yes you're talking to mentors but you're also in the voice channel and you're also you know asking multiple people did it ever feel like fuck i have too much suggestions but i i don't know what to do 
like how do you deal with that uh, yeah actually there was i because i did not have a icebreaker question so i just sent out my assignment ki please just check this out i don't want to review but you can check it out and there were a lot of comments there so i sat down with a few mentors on voice channel midnight time and they said that not every import a feedback is important you should be able to understand what is subjective feedback and what is objective feedback so even even if there were a lot of comments i segregated them on the basis of okay what is important for this project is this something that there it is not according to their taste what is subjective and what are objective so i worked on those which i thought are important hmm. and it actually did help me improve my designs a lot got it awesome man any final notes janil amazing job congrats once again yeah and con- and best of luck with the next couple of months at your internship yeah looking forward to seeing more case studies from your time there absolutely thanks guys cheers